Welcome to the Story A Day podcast. This is Julie Duffy from storyaday.org, encouraging you to be a writer every day, not someday. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This week on the Story A Day podcast, I'm pulling a writing prompt from the archives. It's probably one that you've not seen presented in this way, unless you were one of a very select few people. I'm going to talk you through writing a story about conflict. I've got lots to say on the topic and I hope that you'll take this prompt and write yourself a story this week. Let me know how you get on. Today I want you to write about conflict. That doesn't mean write about a war. It doesn't mean write a story with action scenes in it. But Alfred Hitchcock said drama is life with the dull bits left out. And I think Dull writing is a story with the conflict left out. If you're just writing stuff that happens and being nice to your characters, or they're like you're being mean to your characters but there's no reason for it, then it's not that interesting. I'm sure none of you are doing this. This is just a refresher to let you focus. I'm sure you know all this, but my, my job here is not to really teach you anything that you don't know. If you do pick up things that you haven't heard before, hooray. But I'm pretty sure that all of you kind of know this stuff. My job is to focus you in and help you get to the page and help you give a focus to your writing for that day. Because when we have too much choice, you could write anything and that's paralyzing. So today, your story must focus on conflict. Conflict isn't, like I say, it's not just action scenes, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but why is conflict important? Nothing changes without pressure. If you think about tectonic plates, right? Sitting in California, everything's fine until the pressure builds up and something shifts, then dramatic stuff happens, right? Not always good. But pressure and change and motion usually come from conflict. If you've got two characters in a scene, if they're agreeing with each other, it's not that interesting. But if there's any conflict, that's when the fireworks happen. So conflict makes things happen. Conflict also allows you to raise questions. And questions are good because our brains are hungry to solve problems. Recent neurological research has shown that when we think about a thing, when, when there's a question that we struggle with, that we need to engage with, we end up thinking about it after the fact and that ends up writing it to our long-term memory. So if you want people to remember your stories, having a question in there can be great and conflict is a really great way to raise questions in a reader's mind whether it's a very domestic conflict where you know one person wants one thing and the other person wants another one person wants curtains one person wants blinds it's not life-changing it's not earth-shattering you could make that a really interesting story and one of the ways you would do that was by highlighting the fact that they they are different and there's a conflict there and then you can explore why there's a conflict there and how that plays out and how each personality uh, deals with being opposed, even on an issue that is so not important, like blinds versus curtains. Unless anyone wants to fight me on that. If you think blinds versus curtains is a big issue, we can take that offline. So conflict can be sword fights and, and car chases and uh, big world changing, you know, world domination type stories, or it can be tiny, 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 personal conflict. It can be inner conflict inside one character between what we know we ought to do and what we really want to do. And don't we all deal with that every day? I'm sure you'll find some common ground with your readers if you have somebody who is trying to get fit and being invited out on a St. Patrick's Day revel or a 4th of July barbecue instead of going to the marathon training that they were supposed to be going to. 
conflict creates motion as well. If an object is at rest, you know what it does? It stays at rest. You need to put things in motion and conflict can be a great way to put things in motion. It's the thing that takes your character sort of in the, the hero's journey story arc. They, they have to step outside their door. Usually they have to be pushed outside their door. There has to be something that causes your character and their life and this situation to get rolling. And once it gets rolling, the story gathers speed and you can you can keep going. So you need to have two things, two people or two desires or like because if it's an inner conflict, you need to have two things that are going to rub up against each other, create tension, create motion and give the story something to do. Use as much conflict as you can in a story. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to be subtle. It can even be in the language and I'm going to read you an example from the opening of The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells because I think his choice of words shows how you can reflect the conflict. It opens, no one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that this world was being watched keenly and closely by intelligences greater than man's and yet as mortal as his own that as men busied themselves about their various concerns, they were being scrutinised and studied, perhaps almost as narrowly as a man with a microscope might scrutinise the transient creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. With infinite complacency, men went to and fro over this globe about their little affairs, serene in their assurance of their empire over matter. It's a great example of how your language can really amp up the conflict. We were being scrutinised and yet we were complacent, serene in our little affairs and our empire over matter. The language amps it up but there's a huge conflict between this vastly greater intelligence and our perception of ourselves as humans. We were, and these are European, you know, this is London, this, this is in the late 19th century, pinnacle of civilization, assured of that culture's superiority to everything. And yet we are being scrutinized the way that transient creatures in a drop of water might be scrutinized under a microscope. That's a great opening. You kind of have to keep reading, right? <laughs> that's that's a, I, I think that's what you want to get into your story is this idea that there's a thing and there's another thing and they are in opposition. So conflict is what I want you to focus on. Pick something, pick an inner conflict for your character or pick a desire for your character and pick someone. Don't be subtle today. There's no need to be clever or subtle. Pick someone who is their opposite and just have them oppose them at every turn. That's possibly the easiest way to do it. The inner conflict can be good too. The other thing you can do if you don't want to do a character driven story is you can have outer events causing problems and that's a way that you can have your character fighting to preserve what they already have. So say there's an earthquake or a you know, natural disaster or a political disaster, then you can show your character fighting to preserve something. Not, with, not fighting with themselves, not fighting with another person, but trying to deal with an external conflict that's not character based. If you want more of an adventurous story, more of a sort of action packed story, that's a great way to go for that. And of course, if you are going for extra credit, if you're feeling particularly skilled today, try and do both. Try and do an inner conflict and an external conflict and have them echo each other. And that's something that you can work in later when you're revising, or it may just naturally come out of the story. If so, congratulations, you've hit on a great story and uh, I look forward to seeing it. And that's it, got some ideas, I hope so. Set yourself a timer and go and start a story. Maybe use the short story framework to brainstorm out the story before you get going. Maybe use it to get you through the middle if you get stuck. Um, you can get hold of that. The link will be in the show notes. And apart from that, 
I hope you have a great writing week. Story of Day May is a oof, month and a half away, so you'll be hearing more about that as it comes up, and I'll be sending you lots of information to get you warmed up. This is part of it, taking these writing prompts and using them to write stories whenever you can. I hope this one's helpful. It's, a, it's an idea that you can use over and over again, and let's go write some things this week. Thanks for listening. Why not come over to the blog at storyaday.org and check out this week's writing prompts and articles. And in the meantime, have a great creative week. And of course, keep writing.